Grace, mercy, and peace be with you. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. It's not what you know, but who you know. Ever heard that bit of advice? As cliche as it sounds, this bit of proverbial wisdom is kind of accurate. Who you know matters a lot. The truth of this phrase is played out time and time again in the job market, in higher education, really whenever access to something important is limited. On the one hand, there's nothing malicious about this practice of leveraging relationship. It's human nature to value shared connection, to have loyalties, to help out the people that we know, or people who know the people that we know. And since like tends to attract like, the benefits of who you know often stay within largely homogenous groups. Not by design, just because that's the way that it is. On the other hand, though, this is also how privilege perpetuates itself. This is how wealth and power and opportunity often remain within tight circles. And this is how some people get shut out completely. They don't know the right people, and they will never have the opportunity to meet them. For that reason, systems that operate strictly like this are fundamentally unfair, maybe even unjust. But when a system benefits you, it's hard to say no. As a faith leader, I'm finally eligible to receive a COVID vaccine uh, as of Friday. But COVID vaccines are hard to come by in Colorado right now. So the first thought I had as I began to wind my way through this very cumbersome system was, who do I know that can get me an appointment? Well, it turns out I don't know anyone. So I'll wait in line with the other 2.5 million Coloradans who are eligible now, and I'll get my shot when it's my turn. But if I did know someone, I probably would have given them a call because the allure of privilege is hard to resist. Now, I didn't go to a college that had a Greek system, but I remember being encouraged to do so because people said that one of the primary benefits of sororities and fraternities are the opportunities that they create for networking. Your sisters and brothers in those type of organizations become the people that you know, and those relationships can have a great benefit over time. It turns out that the Greeks in colleges and universities are not the first Greeks to figure this out. In our gospel text this morning, we meet other Greeks who know the value of leveraging relationship. Our lesson for today is set immediately after the triumphant entry in the Gospel of John and immediately before the Last Supper. We are days away from the crucifixion and Jesus is attracting a whole lot of attention to himself in Jerusalem. Our text says, now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Now why did this group of people go to Philip? Because like attracts like. Philip is a Greek name, which suggests that Philip, like this group at the festival, was also Greek. So Philip and Andrew go to Jesus, presumably to introduce members of this group to him, because it's who you know, right? And they know Jesus. But rather than welcome them into a private club with exclusive members-only benefits, Jesus responds by saying, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And then he launches into his last public discourse in the Gospel of John, and it's a doozy. Among other things, Jesus says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Because the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is not for the few at the expense of the many. Jesus doesn't bother to defeat the powers of sin and death for a small group of insiders. He does it for the sake of the whole world, that all might be saved through him. The Greeks in Jerusalem, representing the broader world in the Gospel of John, say, we wish to see Jesus. And to that, Jesus says, then look at the cross. On the cross, you will see the true Christ. On the cross, you will see a God who used the power of love to confront the powers of this world. On the cross, you will see a God who's willing to suffer and die to prove that might doesn't make right, and that sin and death do not get to have the last word. If you wish to see Jesus, look at the cross. As we study the teachings of Jesus, we learn that he can be glimpsed in more places than just the cross. If we wish to see Jesus, we can also look at the need of our neighbor, and we will see him there. 
In scripture, we hear Jesus say things like, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Truly, I tell you, just as you did this to one of the least of these who were members of my family, so you did it to me. If we wish to see Jesus, we should look for him among the hungry and the sick and those who suffer. We will always find him there because Jesus identifies most clearly with the poor and the powerless, with those people who will never know the right people. If you wish to see Jesus, you can look for him there. There's one more place that I can think of where those of us who wish to see Jesus might look. In our text this morning, Jesus says, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servants will be also. Then later at the Last Supper, Jesus washes the disciples' feet and tells them that they ought to wash one another's feet. He says, for I have set an example for you that you should do as I have done to you. He then gives them a new commandment, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. If we wish to see Jesus, then we should serve others as Jesus served. Those whom we know, those whom we will never know. And when we serve our sisters and our brothers and our neighbors and strangers, we see the love of Jesus animated in our hearts, hands, feet, and voices. We become the body of Christ in the world. And if we wish to see Jesus, we can just look in the mirror and see the divine reflection in our very selves in action. I understand and relate to the Greeks in our text today. I wish to see Jesus too. I also understand why they went to Philip. It was the natural next step. After all, we are taught and our lived experience proves that who you know often provides access to privilege. And the allure of privilege is hard to resist. But where Jesus is concerned, none of that holds true. In fact, if you wish to see Jesus, it's not who you know at all, but where you choose to look. Thanks be to God. Amen.